Okay, well, let's uh, let's turn from that then to uh, the um, the sort of the actual work of it. Since uh, you know a lot of our listeners are listening in to get a preview of the type of work that they'll be searching for after school or in their first jobs, uh, I you know I want to talk about the the day to day of this. So, what are some of the tools and techniques that go into a thorough asset inventory? And also, are there their junior and senior members of the team? Are there people who can do run very basic programs and sort of cut their teeth that way while others are are doing things on a larger, more organizational level? Sure. I'll I'll address this question by first talking about what are the things that people typically try when they when they first um attempt to do asset inventory. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes they will try uh, an ADR, right? Because you know I you 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 typically are maximizing your coverage of EDR. I heard this one customer say EDR saturation. <laughs> right. <laughs> trying, okay. to, trying to get yeah. EDR everywhere. Uh, the thing is though, those tend to be really good only for the IT devices yes. that, that you already know about. Yeah. Right. If it's and the ones I, that are up to date and that have, are all sort of speaking the same language, I imagine. Right, right. So like mm-hmm. IoT OT, that's not covered at all. Yep. And the IT devices that have been orphaned over time. So, you know, let's say, you know, Jill set up a server and then she she ended up getting another role or moving to another company. And then all of a sudden that service has sort of been forgotten. Mm-hmm. It's not been getting updates and not been getting its patches. So now you have a situation where that device is no longer covered. And Maybe it had an EDR at one point, but it's sort of disconnected from the, the mothership of, of, of the EDR portal here, right? So um, EDR is great for endpoint protection. It is not, not really a, a tool that can get you to a full asset inventory. Another tool that people often try to use is, is Vuln Scanner, right? Right, okay. Right, so uh, the thing with the Vuln Scanners is a lot of organizations do not scan their entire network with phone scanners um, either because there's a cost issue mm. or because there's uh, some rules or strictures on when they can scan and where they can scan every every phone scanning deployment i know of has a large list of ips in the exclusion list right for, mm-hmm. for whatever reason they were told don't scan this place anymore gotcha. or don't, don't scan this subnet anymore or or uh, the devices that it scanned at one point uh, crashed. Yeah, is that, I was going to say, is that because of the the aforementioned like traffic disruptions and so forth? Yeah. So there, there's a there's a there's a couple issues here. One is on the network level, when a Vuln scanner is not tuned well, it it can it can overload the network, causing network congestion. Right. Another part of it is there are a lot of devices out there that are prone to disruption and a phone scanner is going to send a security probe like that's its job its job is to send security probes to determine whether or not that vulnerability exists and is is exploitable right Uh, there are devices out there who have a, a network stack or applications that are coded for very specific inputs Right. And this is especially true with IoT and OT, right? Where mm-hmm. the code was written to respond to a button being pressed yeah, or a right. switch being flipped. And, and so they're they're not the the code is not expecting arbitrary input over the network. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's an edge case. If it's not handled well, then yes. the device can reboot, freeze up. Yeah, or, or, or crash. We had uh, examples is, just like that on a, on a previous episode in re- regard to water treatment plants and how the, you know they're they're timed on on such as like a, a split second uh, interval that any any additional uh, sort of material that goes through there is gonna is gonna mess up these like mechanical aspects of it. Is that is that right. similar? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, that, that's definitely a part of it. Um, and so you know, Vuln scanners have that effect, uh, which aren't great. And and so one, you might not be covering everything, and then yep. two you you are um you're potentially disrupting parts of the network Mm -hmm. by doing so and and then finally uh for phone scanners where the discovery portion and the the vulnerability assessment activities those two are coupled 
you end mm -hmm. up having a, a really, really long scan time. Yeah, right? sure. Right. Uh, another tool that people might consider is their network access control. Mm -hmm. Right. So very similar to these other tools, it's really good for those managed IT devices that you already know about. But in terms of the things you don't know about, uh, they're, they really just don't do the job at all. Uh, other folks might try their CMDB. Uh, CMDBs are notoriously inaccurate in terms mm -hmm. of um, their coverage of the devices, as well as their, their, um, their ability to fingerprint those devices. And uh, the one remaining tool that seems to be popular, aside from spreadsheets, of course, which has its <laughs> own problem, uh, is is Nmap, right? Okay. Uh, but uh, Nmap, uh, in in its in its way of doing fingerprinting, may send non-standard packets to do identif identification. So Nmap has gotten a bad rap in uh, in terms of devices that are prone to disruption as well. So these there's a a lot of attempts have been made with different types of tooling to go out there and do asset discovery, whether it's for BOD 2301 or not. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and they, 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 they fall short. They all fall short. Right. Um, recently, there are some, some solutions that try to basically just pull data from a bunch of other data sources mm -hmm. and to combine them, correlate them, aggregate them, and then hopes that, hey, you know, this, this gives us a good sense of asset inventory. But the thing is, if the data sources that you pull from are your EDR and your Vuln scanner mm -hmm. and your CMDB, then you're limited to to their ability to cover the the your asset landscape and identification of those assets. So they're only going to tell you more, more about what you already know, not, right. not okay. about what you don't know, right? Yeah. Um, so what we found to be useful is a combined approach of using. API integrations pulling in from data sources, but also using an unauthenticated active scanner that can actually go out on the network to actively find the things that you already know about, as well as the things you don't know about. But it has to be done in such a way that it's not going to disrupt those fragile devices. And there's a lot of engineering that goes into that. Um, part of it is uh, use of incremental fingerprinting, where you don't just query for all the details you want from a particular device, but instead you send at first a super benign query to that device just to get some sense of what that might be. Yep. And if it's one of those, if there's an indication that it's one of those devices that are prone to disruption, then you tailor the succeeding queries to mm. that device to make sure you're not, you're not crashing it. Um, also having the ability to tune your, uh, your packets per second, um, to whatever is necessary, but also distributing the the scan traffic across uh, across networks is is another really helpful tactic. Uh, not sending security probes like a Vuln scanner would, and always sending standard packets. Always sending standard. So you know, give you an example like uh, uh, an unexpected uh, request. So let's say I send you a sin, right, and then you send me a SINAC. Right, and then you're waiting for me to finish that that three way TCP handshake. But uh, a legacy network scanner, what it'll do is just walk away. It'll just drift off. Yeah, yeah. And then mm -hmm. meanwhile, you're waiting for for it to come back. <laughs> I didn't send you a fin. I didn't send you a reset. I, you're just hanging there. Right. right. So that type of thing is something you have to avoid if you're going to be in um, a scanner worth its salt. Now, yeah. of course, as I, as I mentioned before. You need to know, understand the flatness or the, or how well, how segmented your network is, right? Because that that determines like your your ability to scan. So um, there's definitely this this sense that hey, you need to combine the scan traffic with all these other data sources via APIs in order to get that full breadth of asset inventory. Have you seen WorkBytes, the new security awareness training series from Infosec? Our team produced this series with three E's in mind making security awareness training entertaining, engaging, and educational. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to learn more about this hilarious office comedy. And hey, let us know what you think about it.